So what is probability? Well, probability is the subject of predicting how likely something will happen. To figure out probability, find the number you want to know about and divide it by the total amounts. We want to figure out the probability of getting a green ball if we just picked one out randomly. There's three green balls. There's seven balls altogether. Probability of getting a green ball, three on seven. The sample space is the total amount. It's everything that you're considering there. So that's what the sample space is. An outcome means one of the things that could happen. A green ball or a blue ball or an orange ball or a gray ball. And an event means one or more outcomes within the sample space. Union means both together. The union of this set and this set here means I'd combine them both. I'm bringing them both together. And you probably heard it means or. And or means any. Intersection means where two things overlap. If we've got A and B, we can see that there's a bit of overlap here. These both have a 2, 3 in them. A intersection B is 2, 3. Intersection means and, and and means both at the same time. Like a road, it's just like the intersection where they're overlapping. Some rules you should know. Adding the probability of everything in the sample space equals 1. If I want to know the probability of getting any one of these, I just add them all together. And that would give me 1. The probability of not. The probability of not A equals 1 minus the probability of A. Probability of rolling not a 1 would be 1 minus the probability of rolling a 1. This gives us 5 on 6. The probability of A union B would be both of these things together. And in this case, it is number of people that play basketball and number of people that play netball. And this is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So we actually minus the A intersection B because we count this 6 twice. Probability of A as 14 plus 6. Probability of B as 6 plus 19. And since we counted this 6 twice, we have to minus it once. So this is conditional probability. And conditional means that it will happen if something else happens first. So I will buy you ice cream on the condition that you clean your room. And the word given means assuming that. So how many balls are here? Given we're only talking about red balls, well the answer would be two. And this little given has a symbol. How many balls are here? Given there's only red balls, two. So the probability of A given B. B is the total because it's given that B has happened. We're assuming that B has definitely 100% happened. So the only things that exist are the things in B. Well, the total amount we're considering here is 19 plus 6, which is 25. And what we want is A intersection B. Because we are considering only B, this means that the only A's which are available are in the intersection, which in this case is 6. Probability of A given B is 6 over 25. And to make it a bit more general, the probability of A given B, probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. So a quick memory trick to remember this little formula. This little sign here, it kind of looks like a divided by sign. It's not but it looks like one. The probability A given B, because it's divided by B, the bottom is going to be the probability of B. So independent events. So independent means it doesn't depend upon anything else. You'll be independent when you move out. Independent means that the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. So let's look at the probability of winning a race given a person sneezes. The chances of someone winning a race doesn't really depend upon a person sneezing, especially if that person sneezing is on the other side of the world. So the probability of that person winning the race given somebody sneezes well, it doesn't matter, that's just the same as the probability of winning a race. The other way to think about it is if you have something that does equal the probability of A given B equals the probability of A, this means that it's definitely independent. If you've got the probability of A equals 0.6 and the probability of A given B is 0.6, A is definitely independent because it doesn't depend upon B at all. This means that A is independent even if it doesn't seem like it should be. So you might have something like the probability of winning a race given a person has a broken leg. Logically, winning a race would depend a lot on whether they have a broken leg or not. But if the probability of winning a race is 0.6 and the probability of winning a race given they've got a broken leg is also 0.6, it actually is independent. So multiple events. If independent or conditional, you want to know the chance of raining after there was no rain yesterday. So let's say the probability of no rain is 0.6 and the probability of rain, given there was no rain, is 0.4. The probability of no rain, then rain, is 0.6 times 0.4, and that will give us 0.24. 
the probability of it not raining, then the probability of it raining given it's not raining, which would equal the probability of not raining times the probability of raining given it has not rained. Now, if it's independent, we know that the probability of B given A equals the probability of B, and we can get rid of this A. So if independent, this is the rule. If you want to flip a coin and want to find the probability of getting a heads and then another heads, half times half, which would give us a quarter. That would be the probability of getting ahead, then a probability of getting ahead, which would be a quarter. And that's it. I hope this helps.